Yeah, we, we live now. <laughs> we finally made it. This is the D by D podcast for August 3rd, 2017, special edition. I got work in the morning, but we had to come kick it with Brandon Brewer and Melvin Gillard, fresh home from Australia. So, how was your trip to Australia, man? It was good until I got my ass kicked. <laughs> come on, huh? Yeah, man, I've been fighting outside my weight class, bro. I've been fighting that middleweight. Too up, so, too high? Two weight classes out of the weight class, actually. You know? So, just got that fighting? To- well, I was just taking fights, and I wanted to go up and wait. I got tired of cutting weight. Uh, you know, I'm 34. I just didn't feel like cutting weight. Getting, being a little lazy in the gym, that's all. But uh, now I got to bounce back and go back to 155. So I started to start winning fights again, man, before I mess up my legacy, you know what I mean? How was, how was, uh, was Australia? Your first time out there? It was good, man. I, my first time in Melbourne, but it was good. But it was wintertime there, boy. It threw me off. Oh, yeah. yeah it was, was wintertime in Australia right Southern now. Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's that, man, it was like 2 two Celsius, you know, which is like 40 degrees, 30 degrees here. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Time. You got to get a January fight, man. Yeah, I'm going back. I'm actually fighting in October. Uh, I read that. I read that. 155. I'm going to go back at 155. AFC, they made it real good to me. You know, I'm, I'm still down with Bellator right now, but I'm taking a break right now for Bellator until I get me some wins. And then, uh, I got, you know, I got I got a few things I need to work out, you know, outside the outside the break. You know? How's that work? Are you like a side con- – like, like, it's almost like a contract. Well, you almost fight anywhere. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So, so I'm a self-contract. It's like being a mercenary, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we rock, we rock, man. This shit rock. So, uh, Melvin grew up from, from Kenner, right? Yeah, born and raised in Kenner, man. Graduated from Bonham. Shout out to Mike Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, so you and Brandon came about, how how that work out? Uh, we came up fighting together at, uh, at the main event. With he Thomas. was an asshole. And, uh, yeah. He was an asshole. Man, we didn't, didn't like each other. We didn't like each other. You're right. You're right. We didn't like each other. He didn't like the fact that another alpha came into the gym and started running shit. Now, um, back you know, in the day, I used to run the gym. But, but he had taken his personal and then, Rich Clemente did. Rich Clemente I left the for the military. So you had beef with Rich. I know that. Yeah, we still got beef. But wait, I, I still wait, wait, wait. I left for the military. I came back, and there was this new poster boy on the, on, on the gym. So you got to Yeah, so I'm like, this dude. Who the fuck he thinks he is? Next thing you know, we're working together, we're training together, we're working downstairs together, we got applications together, and just for some reason, he's always in our back, I'm always his, his. And then this thing with, like you was just talking about, this Rich Clemente thing, it's like, oh, well, you're Melvin's friend, so you're my enemy. Right. Because the enemy, the friend of my enemy is my enemy. Look proactive. I don't, I don't, I don't need But you still up having people, J, JC, too. I want so, JC Pennington. So it's all good. all so. my words, I want JC Pennington. It's been 12 years in the making. I pray for JC to take me on. Man, pray for it. Rich is fat and out of shape. He ain't never fighting. So why don't we do a local promotion? Them boys ain't ready, bro. <laughs> hey, we can do a tag team. That's what I was trying to do. You know, a tag Russia, team. In Russia, they do 7 on 7. They yeah. even got 2 on 2 right now going on in Russia. Is, yeah, I, mean, so I might try to get in on that myself, but. Imagine two on two, anything goes. You know what I'm saying? That means you take out one oh, first real quick. On now it's two on one. You know what I mean? They would never. That's bad enough, they right? would never agree to that. Everybody, well, be everybody watching this podcast, we just described every high school fight you ever had. <laughs> it was you and you, when it was one on one, and then you kind of started to win, or you kind of started to lose, and your friend came to jump in, and like this one, we just just surprised all in. your high school fights. You know what the thing is though? It don't matter. It's all in the past. You know what? It is what it is. It's a professional league. And I think we all make good money on it, though. We yeah. boys, right? I'm all oh, yeah. about making money. So I, I'm a straight hustle. I hustle everything. Hey, I'm a hustle, too. Well, I, I sell salt to a slug. We, we can do what we got to do with it. <laughs> I sell my wife for 20 minutes. <laughs> <So, so. laughs> <laughs> hey, you're going to say, but no, you might get a lot of people for so that, man. For real, man. So, uh, so y'all, y'all join up in the gym. So oh, then, we've been brothers for over 15 years, man. Yeah. We've been together. I know. I used to go to the main events. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, used, to, he used to come to the fights yeah, at the main yeah. event before you started fighting. He used to come. Main like, event, man. Main event. 15 years. You call, yeah, main event. You used to be fighting the crowd. Yeah, I miss that place, man. But it ain't that no more. They work. They work it down. No, I came home and visit. That too. I came home and visit one time, and it was gone. Is uh, is the is the club up the street still there? 
Was that Kenny's? Kenny's? Yeah. Ah, Kenny's. 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 Yeah, they, they did it, it's that. probably man. I haven't I haven't dipped off the fat city in a hot minute, so I couldn't tell you. Drago was still there though. Drago, Drago. Drago. <laughs> Drago. 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 You know what's not there? Yeah. Crazy Johnny's. Oh, so the steakhouse. Remember right? Crazy Johnny's, the steakhouse? There you go. How do you? It was a uh, escape. Hey, no, how do you miss Crazy Johnny's oh, yeah, by not going by it when they didn't know it? I know, uh, I know Ampersand is gone. I just saw that oh, just, yeah, uh, yeah, two days oh, ago. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah Ampersand is gone, too. I guess Billy finally got in trouble. Yeah, there's not too many. Uh, a lot of them big clubs, man. Yeah, yeah, like, Ampersand was running for a long time. Yeah, man. but that, that cycle had phased out with the um, with the house music. Not trashy really. and trashy and, uh, yeah, and uh, I like trashy. Man. I know trashy, my boy. The trashy is the next now that phased out a little bit, kind of. Kind of everything kind of went down a little hillside, you know. So a lot of them, uh, electronic, you know, clubs. Man, the that. electronic clubs still hot though in Vegas and other places though. They just they never they never evolved. They never <laughs> changed their music up. You know, you gotta you gotta keep up with the trend. You gotta grow. Yeah, you do, you do. Because now a lot of house music is mixed with hip hop. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it wasn't like that. You had trance. You had you had, you had the house music. You had hip hop. Now all of a sudden, hip hop. They merge with trend with, with with the house music, and you got a different sound. That's how it is. They, they got to evolve. You know? So when you when you when you wrote out of New Orleans, and basically you're still in New Orleans, but when you when you took that next step, where where, where did you grow? Come from the New Orleans fight scene? Where did you? Well, right now I live in I live half the year in Denver, Colorado. I have a place there, and then I have a place. My primary place is in South Florida. You know, with the wife and the girls, they all live in Florida. We just got back from Florida. You know, and, from uh, Florida. I'm down. I'm down for a little, right, right close enough, man. Right, 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 right there, Broward County, right there. Yeah, we were literally about twenty minutes north of Palm, West Palm Beach. And in Denver, I live in basically technically downtown Denver. You know, I'm in the downtown area. Denver's underrated, man. Just, man, Denver's popular. <laughs> Way underrated, no more. We they legalized weed. So. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now they get ready. They, they, they literally like a lot of states with the commission. Are letting it go with fighters now, you know, because of the, the Nick, Nick Diaz issues and stuff in the past, you know, like the they said, issue? yeah, like they say, we is not, it's not a, uh, it doesn't help you win fights, you know, but they do have to put it down a certain amount of weeks yeah. before leading up to the fight, because now they're able to tell if guys are still smoking like the night before the day of, they can yeah. tell, yeah, they can tell. Listen, listen folks, we got Mr. Brewer. Mr. Galog, Mr. Riley, and myself. Y'all got any questions? Feel free to uh, oh, shoot them out. Higgins couldn't make it tonight. He got tied, oh, he got tied up. Yeah, we were playing 31 with Grandma, with Randy, and my mom. Tell us about the hustle we're doing tonight. We're a little late coming in, but like like Randy and my mom, and I was, the, I, was, I was the last man standing. So you know. I want to ask you guys, what questions do you have? And let's let's actually like turn up the notch a little bit. So you have a UFC veteran. Let's. MMA. We're talking about Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather. Oh, here we go. Mayweather all day. Let the comments go. What do you think? Who's going to take who? Me personally, I think Mayweather's going to win. Do I want him to win? Absolutely not. I do not want Mayweather to win. I think that Conor McGregor's going to knock him out. He's the first three or four rounds, like you said. If he does not, Mayweather's gonna do what he does in every other fight. He was a point spar and just hey, but I'll bet anybody. Like I'll bet anybody. I'll bet anybody. But I would love to knock the out of him. He's gonna He's gonna knock McGregor out before the sixth round. No, there's no way he doesn't head to knock anybody out. Y'all don't understand, bro. I ain't never been around Mayweather. Y'all never seen the guy train. Y'all don't know nothing about Mayweather. Y'all only know the finishing product in the ring. You gotta see the work that the guy put in. Even when he was retired, the dude was still training. I don't care. I don't you worry. Money, money in the bank. Right now, Elvis says put money in the bank. Dude, six uh, I fight on the 25th of August, right? I'm doing a boxing match. And where is that at? I'm going in Detroit. I'm going straight from Detroit to Vegas. I will be putting at least five to seven grand on this fight. I'm going to take my winnings from Detroit, and I'll bet it off. And you're going to bet on the on decision? Or no, I'm out? betting on a knockout before the sixth round. You no, no, no. Out. You might as well just give me the five to seven. No, you got me crazy, boy. When I double my money, you're going to be like, uh, oh, let's kick it. Mayweather's going to knock him out by the third. Before the 
Pat knows a little bit. He knows boxing history. I know boxing too, man. I don't think I think he'll knock him out by six. I don't think I don't think he'll knock him out. I think I don't know if he'll knock him out, but he may stop. Because I think Mayweather may land eighty-five to ninety percent of his punches. Mayweather gonna. He has a possibility of doing that. Mayweather. Even if he don't KO him, he's gonna finish him before the sixth round. The dude is out of his league, bro. If it was an MMA fight, I'd take McGregor all day. I'm going to make fighter first, then boxing, then kickboxing. Well, that's like so, asking us. Uh, people are trying but, to compare but, the discipline. But the they, people, the, any the people right? that are having problems with their answers or with their thoughts, they ain't even fighters. Mm -hmm. Take it from the word of right. Take it from the mouth of a fighter. All right? So what? When, when How do you say questions? Right here. No, it's on here. It's, it's on here. It's on here. Right. It's it's not not right. So when, so so Mayweather threw it out. I'll fight McGregor and what eight, what eight ounce, what He said he'll fight with eight ounce. He ounce said he'll, he'll, he'll fight with McGregor and Octagon. What happens then? What, in the MMA fight? Yeah. McGregor, McGregor wins he'll, he'll because win. he'll take him down. I bet you he wouldn't stand in bank with him. If it, were, if it was a real boxing match, it would be eight ounces from the get go. If, if they did an MMA fight, but it was no take from the get go, it would Hold be up. from if eight ounces. If it was three ounce UFC gloves on in a boxing ring, all cage, whatever, it doesn't matter. They three ounces, really. They only fall on your hands. If if it was a boxing match with MMA gloves on in the cage, no takedowns, no kicks, Mayweather still win. I agree. The, the comparison. Well, the only way, the only way Conor McGregor would ever be Mayweather, other than jacking them off, is with kicks involved or takedowns. If there ain't none of that added in there, Mayweather's gonna be able to go. Man, Mayweather's I gonna spend this gonna be a left hook or a way right now. Man, Mayweather's gonna spend this kid, bro. Man, I'm a Conor McGregor. I like how I'm Conor McGregor, but it's a boxing match. I told, I told Understand my brother, what I'm saying. Saying. it's a fucking boxing match. Period. That's, That's all you want to talk about. It's like asking a general contractor. Shit. To go do one of the hardest electrician jobs in the house. Yeah. Is it, you know, he, 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 Connor's pretty much a general contractor. He can do a little bit of everything. But here's the thing what question does this really answer? If McGregor wins against it's Mayweather, not a help. It ain't gonna wait, 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 wait. Does this mean that MMA we is superior to, right. Does this mean that MMA is superior to boxing because an MMA fighter can cancel out all seven of his disciplines and only focus on boxing and beat a boxer? Or can a boxer focus on boxing and learn a little bit of jiu-jitsu? Hey, I don't care. You know what I care about? My dude, Money Mayweather, he's smart. The man's a businessman. He buy the it's, it's, it's a money thing, he right? He buy to help McGregor have a better life. He giving right. him some charity right now. So, so it's a money thing. And, and McGregor just so, had a baby. So guess what? He helping your baby. Go to school when your kid so, go graduate from college. Those records are on his back. On his no, ass Set him in the I want to look back on his ass with it. Give him a graduation. <laughs> Set him in the Right? Look, at your prime, at 27, 26, 27. If one of these cats in a, in a boxing would, cut, would have said, Look, dog, let's go make the six grand, seven grand in a boxing room. I mean, seven million, six, seven million in boxing. You, you would take that up. Hell right? yeah. Well, I'll fight Mike Tyson. I still fight Mike. That's one of my mentors. One of my best friends. I'll, He's really good friends. I'll friend fight Mike Tyson, Tyson, but he's fighting at all. I'll fight anybody, bro. So that that explains why I would take Mike for what? Fight. 100 million? Hell yeah. They well, they said million. it wasn't my, me, whether Mike made 300 million. And, 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 and guess what? McGregor's making crumbs compared to what Mayweather's gonna make. So who really winning? So who really winning? Who really winning? Everybody's looking at who cares about who's gonna punch, so, right? At the end of the day, it's 20 right. years from now, 20 years from now, Mayweather, if, let's say Mayweather, Mayweather did lose the fight. Who gives a fuck? Do about to make three hundred million dollars. Because right? so guess what? Twenty years from oh, now, if I was me, I'm gonna shut you down. Yeah, he beat me, but who can I will shut you down yeah. because you do not sound like a fighter right now. You're crazy, bro. You do not sound like a fighter, a fighter right fighter now. Then it does not I'm matter. A fighter, I'm a fucking husband. Well, then he shouldn't be worried about the money. He should be worried Man, about the win. It's always about the money. Fuck bro. the we, money. We probably the money. That's right. not a problem because we kept saying fuck the money. That's why we ain't getting paid. And we ain't yeah, never been paid. That's why the UFC been pipping us. Yep. All these organizations pipping us. Right? We yeah. need a fight to do Because I don't care about the money. Without the money, guess what? We did all that hard work, all the years, and we ain't got shit to show for us. Y'all can't build this business. Yeah. Without yeah. us, they got no business. you one of the ones that helped build this business. I was, bro, I was fighting in the UFC when people thought it was So, bullshit. I'm a fighter, and, and I fight for the fight. 
I don't worry oh, about but you money. Fight for but honor. You fight like for honor. Like this one and this one. So we should talk about that. Man, look, bro. It's a business. A business. A at your best day. You when you go, you go, you go to the military, right? Fuck that. When you go to the military, you got bullets flying over your head, right? You got to make a fucking paycheck. You fight for 1%. You don't even know why you fight for 1%. Fuck that. I'm a fighter, bro. I'm a fight right on US soil. So at your best payday, not to give exact figures, so who was your best payday fighting? I've been in six, six figures. figures. I've been six figures. In you know, one fight, made six figures. I've had a couple of six figure fights. But I've also been stupid. I didn't have any guidance. I blew money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm starting from the bottom again. Plus, with the fucking IRS, fuck the government. You know what I'm saying? And I've been saying fuck the government since Obama. Mm -hmm. um, fuck him too. I don't give a fuck about him either. You know what I'm saying? Why should I pay for motherfuckers sitting on their sofa selling drugs? <coughs> they got I, first Bentley, Rolls Royce. First, the first motherfucking fancy car I ever seen was in the fucking projects. Fuck you, uh -huh. Doctor Sun. You know what I'm talking? You know what I'm saying? I work hard for my money. Why so the fuck should I, I was at, so, money? so I, I remember the fight you uh when B was out on across the seas. You dedicated the fight to be for uh you did you for did. UFC. Yeah, you dedicated one fight to mm -hmm. always, man. That's my boy. We got matching tattoos, bro. Mine right here. Say yeah, peace. Mine's a little bad. For mine right here. I got you know what I'm saying? That's my fam, bro. We made them came up together. We ain't sure. Right, yeah. Bro, we got actually the same tattoo that he has. It's right. He gave me the name Beast. I came out like a young cocky Shalmation. <laughs> I fought America's top team, Ronaldo Duarte. Came out within the first minute. Dude, I'm rocking. Broke his rib, kicked him, everything. I'm like, yeah, I'm winning. My dumb ass shoots him and takes him to the ground. He triangles me, and I tap out in like a minute. And so, he walked out the ring. So who was your hardest fight? I let him have the first. I got are, the you, uh, are, are, you, are you talking about in the cage yeah, in the or in life? In the cage. We, we can step out the next fight. Got to do my drink. Actually... It was the hardest and the easiest fight, which is kind of ironic. So, so for about so for about six years, I trained with guys in Georgia, and I flew you in. You came, he came and trained with me in over there. I had seven fights in two days. But he said, "Who was your hardest fight?" Just tell us who your hardest fight. I lost two of those seven fights to the same guy. Not. Who was my coach? Keith Bach. So what I will say is to this day, my hardest fight is against Keith Bach and he beat me. I mean, you should never say that, but your hardest fight is always yourself. No. That's that? Because you lose fights because of your mistakes, not because the guy beat you. Do you know what would happen if I met myself on a public street? Yeah. I it'd would whip my own ass. ass. If I had to fight myself, it'd be a fucking drive. I would whip my own <laughs> ass if I met myself in the public street. But no, I I, I battled my coach, and it was a hard fight. The first the first fight, I was up nine to nothing. They wanted to choke me out. The second fight, I I got in a concussion. I understand the eight count. They he got in and choked again. But see, this motherfucker, and he ain't here now. He's gonna come back in the in, in the screenshot in a minute. But he don't listen to a goddamn thing. I don't want y'all to think that I don't listen to shit. Listen, listen to training to him. He don't. He don't listen to shit. He don't listen to a goddamn thing. He still don't listen to shit. No, he don't listen to shit. He's gonna come back from shaking his bird in the bathroom and be like, "What are you talking about?" He don't listen to shit. I've been saying it. I've been saying. I lived in Germany, and I used to call him from Germany on like the the, the prepaid medical. And I called yeah, him from the hospital. Cars. I never called him. No, no I, I actually, can't. I actually had surgery one day in, in um, Bala, Bala, Iraq. I was in a tent getting surgery, and I called him. And you know what he does? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'll be all right. And then blows off. I'm calling you from Iraq. I'm calling right. you from Iraq. Like, right. pay attention. Hey, man, let me let me call you back in like ten minutes. How are you gonna call me back in ten minutes? You're gonna call me on. That's There's a phone sure outside. Right. <laughs> they yeah. showed up a different number. No, my heart, my hardest fight. When it when it comes to the actual like fight part, um, I would say the 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 fight that I had against my coach. But I had one fight when I was about nineteen years old. Nineteen years old, I fought uh, against uh, Christian Rothamel's student, and 
the rules were it was an MMA fight, but there was no punches. So you couldn't do this. There was no punches. There was slaps only, which is called tank race. Melvin knows tank race rules. Well, the guy I was fighting, his name was Renee. I got him down in the arm bar, and I broke his arm backwards. Like, I got him in the arm bar. Now, what happened was, during the fight, he mounted me, and he was on top of me, and he, had, he was doing a slapping thing. And when he slapped me, he did this. He cupped his hand, and when he did, he popped my eardrum. So I busted my eardrum. So you got face slapped. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got this slap. Oh, I definitely oh, got this slap. And he popped me in drum. Well, I got pissed off, and I punched him. Instead of, like, slapping, I punched him. And I broke his nose. And when I got him on the ground, I broke his arm backwards. But I broke his arm back. And, you know, it took me, I mean, it's still been, shit, it's been 20 years. It's still, so, like, since on me. I don't like doing like, Brian, how many years have you served in a service? <laughs> 19, two, March 24th, 1998. And then you since retired? Yeah. I retired. I went with Ranger Battalion in 2006, and I went with Special Forces in 2011. Got another question. What about Mel? What was your, I know you said well, your hardest you heart heart fight was yourself. Honest, I, get, I get that, but just in the ring, what was your, Yo, yo, B, what is your, what was your, your hardest fight? Who did so? Yourself. So, literally, that's my answer, bro. Like, when you're in the ring, bro, it's you against them. You only lose when you make mistakes. Are you, are you second guess yourself? So the, the beef, but the beef is real, though, right? He wants Some you to the beef is real. Out of the so a lot of people want to say, "What you talking about?" I am the, I am the crazy. I'm the foundation of my own losses. I, I'm the reason I lost. Mm -hmm. Like nobody ever beat my ass like that. I I lost because I made a mistake right. or I didn't train hard enough. Or I'm in the ring and I second guess myself. I doubted myself. You know, my first loss was to Carlo Carl Crater, and I only lost because I see Yvette was in his corner. I psyched myself out before the fight even started. It was an FFC. I'll never forget it. On on the flip side of that, when y'all when y'all step in the octagon and or the ring and the bell rings, how soon when you look in your opponent's eyes and when you know you beat them? When he look away. Because he like Tyson, like, Tyson like, say, like Tyson used to say, like Tyson used to say, when they were in the eye, you look away, you know you got them. Yeah, it's you over. you know when you look at somebody, you know if, if you if, if he's game or not, if you got to fight one or not. Yep. Now what what well, I can start? I can say that true as shit. Yep. At what point? Uh, so pre fight. How much is the pre-fight? How much is the hype is real? So is some is some of it made nah, up? Nah, it's some real of, with me. Nah, man. It's oh yeah, it's real. You know, I mean, I fought oh, some of my best sure. friends, me and Nick Diaz, good friends, me and Cowboy Cerrone, good friends. I lost to him, but I was beat with you. So I know, heard, yeah, but it's always, it's, it's always real. It's always real. What they, what they got there? No, uh, Clifton Couture was asking about Brandon. What did you want to know? I was asking what you was up to and uh, <laughs> how you been since the home. Well, I'm actually, uh, I'm starting to realize that being retired sucks. It absolutely sucks, man. Yes, I'm 37 years old. I'm retired. I'm from the military. And I can only fish like two or three days out the week. I was fishing like four, five, six days out the week. He's for a day fishing. I ain't been fishing yet. Anybody have a Q-beam? You are black. You can't even swim. This nigga what the fuck? I'm going to take you fucking fishing for. This nigga right here can swim. Yeah, go ahead. Please, please, I want to see some laugh out loud at the bottom. He can't fucking swim, but he wants me to bring his fucking fish. This nigga can't fucking swim. Go ahead, make a comment. Put laugh out loud, can't swim, hashtag can't swim. Anybody want to bet me on that? I can't. I've been in one fucking You put something. What else you got? What else you got? Now, I got a Philip guy was talking about he got he's a back in the. Only part time. Uh, so second guessing himself. So, he did, Nick. so if there's one person out there right now that, that you want to put hands on besides Clemente, or Brad, no, no, I don't care. So there's I'm not that bad. one name out there. You just, nah, man, because at the end of the day, even with my losses, guys are still scared to fight me, bro. They don't know what's Melvin. They don't get. They don't know what's coming up next time. The next couple fights. Because everybody been seeing me lose fights outside my weight class. Mm -hmm. Nobody's paid attention to the fact that I've been fighting that middleweight. But Melvin, do you ever get tired of people not knowing 
which Melvin is going to show up? No, I don't get tired. I don't give a fuck about what the fuck they think. Well, we know we, you got some of the baddest hands in the business, right? Some of the best. So, so I'm saying, so I if, still hold the record in the UFC most for most knockouts. And most, I, the second knockout. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I guess like what? I still hold a record. I've been on the UFC for four years already. Oh, and you're the only guy. You got to do it. Wait, wait, wait. He's the only guy to ever punch somebody in the stomach. TKO by the And knock them out. You ever got punched in your belly button and got knocked out? I gave her So how we call out when we these mega boxes to get in the ring with you? <laughs> they I don't know. You. Ask them if they want us to fight now. How about the way we got to win? How can get you in that Look, ring? At, at the end of the day, it's like this. They get you some of that. At the end of the day, it's like this. Whether I'm, whether, no matter when I show up to fight, or uh, if I show up to fight, when I sign contracts and I tell people I'm fight, everybody tune in. I'm good. Ah, that was, uh, and I'm one of them. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's some fighters, people don't even care to turn the TV It's a show party. coming. All right. I'm, hey, I put on a show. I saw it. Win or lose, I still fight to the end. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody gonna make me quit. You know what I'm saying? I got my ass handed to me. If they can get through me, if they think they're tough enough to get through me, at the end of the day, I I sum it up up like this, and I'm gonna leave on this note. I'm a fighter. I was born a fighter. Most people gotta learn how to fight. Sometimes I'm sometimes it's my night, sometimes it's not. But guess what? I've had more success than failures. I have 181 victories. I got 18 losses now as of last weekend. I got two no contests and two draws. You do the math. You tell me what the fuck my what my odds are. You know what I'm saying? You put more work than 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 ten people. And I fought eight times this year alone already. And I still got four more fights before I end the year. So you tell me. Most fighters don't even want to fight that yeah, many. No, no. All right. Some people all out for years. Look, yeah, they they, they some of them some of them fight, they get lucky. I don't believe in luck. I was the better man that day. Some yeah, fighters, fighter some not, fighters right? wanna fight. And then as soon as they gotta jump up the ladder to fight the tougher, no, a tougher fight, now nah, they wanna have it. Well, never come. It, never. It's a money issue. A lot right? of fighters, like like with Nate, you know they they holding out for what one fight a year. Yeah, yeah bro, that's yeah. them, bro. You know what? I love so, to fight. I love to fight. Period. I ain't never gonna fight for free, but I love to fight. Period. You know what I mean? So, like, Nate, so, Nate, so that Nate, makes Nate, me a better. If you had asked me who's the better man, I'm always gonna be the better. Oh, yeah, man. always. I'm not gonna say no to nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? I will say no to fight in that middle way again. I ain't never doing that again. Nick Cliff said, every fight I seen Melvin in the straight beast mode. Always, man. You know? So if I ain't fighting, I'm fucking. Ha. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> <that bad. laughs> so let's go on. What tell us between the both of y'all, tell us the life of cutting weight. I, 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 what I, is I that? I hate it. I hate it. So, All right. How about so, how, so how you walk this? My life. I walk around at 180 and I now I'm about to start cutting back at 155. So you fight I at was, 155. You you you, you are fight at 155 and you walk around at 180. Yeah, so my life, you, my life fight, fight, I was one, I, I wait, 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 wait. It, I was it, 172. It, 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 I was 172 pounds. I cut down to 140 in six days. What was that? You put bricks in your pocket? <laughs> you know, all on me. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, yeah, you did come back. 172. Yeah. I went down to 140. Three hours after weighing, I was just back up to 160. Gravy, you know. So tell, just give us a little, a little breakdown on how that works. A 30 pound weight. How do you do that? There's different ways you can do it, man. You get, you get to do water log, which is distilled water, and then you go and sweat out. Or oh, you got the hot tub. With, hot the, with the Epsom salt, you know what I'm saying? Just sweat out that way. It's all uncomfortable. Ain't, ain't, none, how, of it, ain't how, none of it. Good. How bad do you feel when you cry? I feel like I'm fucking dead. I, mean, I feel like that. You feel like that. I feel like that. Yeah, I'm I'm in, I feel like that. I look like a corpse like in the casket. I, I feel like a corpse in the casket. And I look like one, well, but I just don't smell so like So you got it. one day to rejuvenate. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, mean, I feel like you got once I get out of I'm good after that. But it's the process of getting to that point. You know what I'm saying? Well, not when they went. Well, not when they went. Yeah. And the UFC yeah. and Bellator actually go down. It's illegal. Because that's how you blood dope. It started catching guys' blood dope when they took their blood it's out. It's a lot of water when you go back. It's all water. It's all water. It's all water. It's all water. I went from 172 to 140. Two hours later, I was back up to 170. I'm trying to talk to these fuckers in the competition right now. Ooh. But, you know, they, 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 they sit there. Tell them. I think it got sharks. Sharks. it must have sharks in the water or something like that. I don't even think that these white motherfuckers can swim. Well, well you know, Brian, we gonna, you better bring a sleeping bag. He can break it down. How many times you went fishing? How many times you broke down? 
out of a hundred, probably thirty. Uh, <laughs> that's that's still not good eyes. 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 Good we pulled I don't want to fight. I, 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 I want to fight. I told him. I told him. I said, I'm going to fight. 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 i am going to Oh, it's way better than that. Time enough time for the time? Yeah, yeah. Time to, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still on Australia time. Yeah, what is the sites out there? I'm on Saudi Arabia. That's good site. Now I'm in a good site. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see much while I was in Melbourne. Melbourne is like a city. You know, it's not. I did go to the market, though. They had the fish market. Is there some pretty women in Australia? No. Not really. I didn't see them. No. There was ask about where? Ask them about China. Yeah, where are the pretty women? They're everywhere, but I didn't see them in Melbourne. Yeah. Hashtag pretty tag. <laughs> Sweet cheeks. So where, where so you travel the world. So where where are the beautiful women? Is it here in the wilds or is it Dubai? Dubai. 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 Oh, that's Dubai. that's one of my places to go. Dubai. Dubai, yeah. Yeah. Spot. Dubai well, is big, big up. Dubai. When we're in Dubai yeah, together, Dubai. Dubai was awesome. Beautiful. Amazing. Yeah? Amazing. Not they flawless, bro. How about this? In Los is it Vegas. Import them? No, no, or is it yeah. is it homebred women? No, 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 no. no, like you go to Vegas and they say, hey, you have to be between 5'8", five 5'10". Five five oh, the the waist has to be on zero the plane too. Oh, God, drop it, Your face complexion has to look like this. We got on a plane that they, body, body, that they don't discriminate when they do. Everybody high. looked like a porcelain doll. So everybody, every oh, every woman oh, stood baby. there and look, she had her hands just like this. She had a skirt on, a little thing. She looked like a little doll. Yes, sir. So I'm like, all right. He's comparing everything to, to Shamet one. Yeah, you know, I'm not. Hey, 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 <laughs> I told him, I said, I thought it was a puss when he got 1847 stuck in my face. Where is the one place you won't fight? I won't fight or want to fight. You won't, you won't. You know, what country? Like, say the Philippines. They said the Philippines in, in the town. I'll fight anywhere, bro. I mean, I love traveling the world. I'm mean, blessed. I get to travel the world. See, people look at the table. So, how does that work? Do they pay, do they pay for your saying all that? Or they don't contract? When I pay for everything, but when people criticize my fighting, right? One, most of the people that criticize me have never fight in their life, mm -hmm. right? Two, I get to travel the world, motherfuckers, for free. So y'all can suck that, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and most, people, most, of the people, most of the people that never left New Orleans until Katrina came. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they I, only with you. I would have probably been one of them people. But when Katrina came, to saved my life. Man, ain't shit, dude. I love home, though. Home will always be home. And but, I, I've always seen you. Right? Exactly. Even, even, up, even like, like, like my buddy, you know, everybody that went to the military. I still see more of the world than they saw because they stationed somewhere for so long. I come, I go, I, I travel around the globe. The month of July, I wrap around the globe twice. All right. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And it just, and we just start in August, and I'm about to go back out, out of the country. I get to travel. When next fight? Home. My next fight is in Detroit. Detroit on the 25th. And then right after that, okay. I go back to London for my BKB boxing. So I'm doing very enough for boxing. Yeah, we see that when, when, when B, when you was on a, the internet sensation when he was calling your boy out across the street. What was the beef with that? Oh, uh, your boy from the last fight. It was, on was, it was all over the internet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're talking, yeah, you talking about uh, Jim Sweeney. Yeah, we fought, but I got robbed. It was a 10 8 round. The first round, I knocked him on his ass. Only five rounds. I knocked him down. After that, he didn't really do much. You know what I'm saying? We went back and forth a little bit, but a 10 8 round should have so, so cool me to fight. But he the champion. I fought in his backyard. He's fighting my boy Ryan Ford next. Me and Jimmy cool now, but I'm not for belts, man. I'm about to win. This will be my tenth world title when I'm when I go and take that belt. That's another thing people don't see because I don't have a UFC uh, belt or belt. People don't even realize I'm a nine-time world champion already. So I don't care, you know. It's like different organizations as a pedestal, you know. It's 
different different levels. UFC, Bellator, yeah, yeah, UFC is a big name, but UFC don't pay fighters right. Yeah. I made more money fighting in local shows, small shows right now, than I made in certain years that I fought in the UFC by itself. treat you better. Yeah. I'll compare it to music, man. Like, you talk about currency on the way here. Currency's not... That's my homie, man. What do you mean? Like, currency's not getting the Drake plays and stuff like that. That dude's going around. Nah, but, 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 money, but when you in a little small, records, we in a small little personal little clubs and bars and people know, coming anyway. out to see you, guess what? I, I, I'd i rather do that 20, 20 times in one year to perform three times in a year. And those 20 times, I'm going to make triple my money. And those three times is the only time people see me on the big stage. So they think, oh, man, I was making millions. No, uh-uh. I make my millions when I do shit on a smaller scale. You know what I mean? Right. And that's why I love fighting these smaller shows. Like right now, I'm signed with the AFC, the Australian Fight um, Championships. And I'm going back in October to fight for the belt. I'm going to go back to Bellator in January. So I still got that right there. And I'm doing the bare knuckle boxing in Europe. So I'm winning right so now. You know, so I'm looking at nobody. Thank you. know what I'm saying? Everybody that got a, that got an opinion about how I fight a oh man you should retire that's because they were born fucking quitters. When a person tell me I should retire, you should fucking take a gun and shoot yourself in the head. And if you got kids, shoot them bitches first. Yeah. That's how so, I feel about people that tell you quit. Because if you if you let your kid come home with a second place trophy, you telling your kid it's okay to be a fucking loser. Yeah, okay. I don't it's have kids, so guess what? That don't, that don't apply to me. But when I do have a kid. Let my kid come home with a second place trophy. I'll make him burn that shit in the tree. You know how I used to lynch niggas? I'm gonna make my kid lynch the trophy. We're gonna beat that bitch with a bat like it's a motherfucking pinata. So Ain't we, no second place we, in my house. So the, the, the whole thing about, let's get to this. We're talking about concussions. What's your. So Man, look, you get a concussion from a car accident. I mean, you get a concussion from a car accident. I'm not motherfucking door every morning. You get if killed. If you don't take out, out the trash and you're only in one show, I'm gonna say this. If you live in fear, you are you ain't living. So, right, you know right. what I'm saying? As a human being, would you turn? Would you? Would you not want your 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 personal offspring to fight? Yeah, so hell yeah. yeah! I had a daughter, bro. She'd be a fucking bitch. You want her to fight? Hell yeah! But I want her to be a ballet dancer. I want her to be a golfer. I want, her, be, I want her to do. I want her to be a, a gymnast. Because I want her to have an option. I want her to be able to choose. Uh, being a fighter, she ain't got to go to the ring, but she going to not protect us. So like the mill- millennials now, they they all don't want my, my kid to get hurt and don't want to play football. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, why, that's why that's why kids. You put salt, out. right? Bro, I see salt. little girls in the gym beating up on little boys all the time. And you know what? The mom's like, oh, my son's crying. You can't you can't protect him his whole life. Once he turns a certain age, you got to let him go. You can't baby him his whole life. I see little girls beat little boys up all the time. Little boy, you know little boy, boy. It could be a, it could be a Naga jujitsu tournament. I see little girls beat little boys up, and little boys be whining like little pussies. That right there is unacceptable because that's like Brandon saying certain women should be military because a dog can smell their pistol. Well, we right? go back at it. Same Again. thing. If you let your boy, if you let your son be a pussy, and that next thing you know, 30, 40 years from now, our special forces is gonna be all female. I think the best assassin is a female anyway, because she can fit in small spots. Again, we got Mr. Brewer, Brandon Brewer, Mr. Melvin Gallard, and Pat Lally and myself. If you got some questions come across, let us know. We got uh, Brandon wanted to, that's what he wanted to talk about. Oh, I wanted to talk about transgender. Transgender. I can't believe I'm going to you losers in this damn room right now. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't got no life, you know that? Y'all got nothing going on. Y'all need to get something. They wanted to talk something. about some transgenders. In the military, on a Thursday night. Look at these fuckers. Ladies night. They all up in the room right now. What today is Thursday? No, some of us the first day of the weekend. Y'all sitting there watching us talk shit. Who <laughs> <laughs> really the silly? But people, that's what they want. To I know, talk, I know, man. I know. I'm just fucking with my love fans, man. My yeah. love fans. Y'all, y'all, y'all questions now. Melvin, no, see it, dog. Y'all the questions out there. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about some transgenders in the, in the military. Dude, this- this He's is, got something on his brain, and B wants to get it off. It's, <laughs> it's plain and simple. Transgenders are mad at us because we don't want to accept them for who they are and allow them into the military. But they not want to tell you up. Motherfucker, you didn't accept yourself. <laughs> That's why you got a sexual fucking... Uh, I, call it, I, call it, I call it the Bruce and the Slash. You the didn't day. accept yourself. Caitlin. Caitlin. So why should I accept you? You Caitlin. don't accept yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. 
Now, where do you mostly train? Do you go to different places for different areas? Then Hans, you're awesome. Yes, I do. I travel around the world, man. I get no, I get out of the jiu jitsu at. I don't need to train jiu jitsu. I'm a fucking fighter. I don't need to be hugging nobody. I'm trying to knock you the fuck out. Yep. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I checked, it was an MMA fight, not a Naga tournament. Just saying. I would love to wrestle. You don't want to wrestle with me. Oh, now nah, come on. You don't want to wrestle with me. Not really. I'm not afraid of that small black thing you got. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, I think leave that to yourself. Last time you walked him out, I was thinking you didn't want to leave. He has <laughs> never gotten all three hooks in. Ever. I think. He has never gotten rear mount and gotten all three hooks in. No. I think the reason why he has gotten all three hooks in. So, let's go. We're going to touch on the music scene, no? New school, old school. Old know? school, Outcast, Goody Mouth, all day. I seen that. Like, all day. They told me you coming on. I, all day, bro. Top 25, I see you have the top 25 Outcast songs of all time. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. I just saw that. So, I mean, we'll yeah. go to Outcast. Bro, bro, Outcast, Outcast Goody Mouth, all day. Outcast, my Goody favorite. Mouth too. So you can't so, have Outcast without Goody Mouth. Get up, get out and get something. That's all the best songs. Oh, no, that's cool. Nah, ATL in. Oh, ATL in. Oh, ATL I keep going. Elevator. Fucking, uh. Elevator. Lynn Jackson. A player's ball, so Southern player listing. Uh, Ain't no thing but a chicken uh, wing. What else we got? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jezebel, the remix to oh, the yeah. remix. You can only see on fucking so on you YouTube. Mean? It's not even on the album. You gotta hear the remix. Of, you gotta hear the remix of Jezebel. Yeah, Bro, I, I, can, well, I can talk Outkast. I, I can talk Outkast through my ball day. Black Ice. I refuse limitations. That's one of my favorites. Touch I, I keep touch, all going, touch, bro. See, what, do you, what do you think about this new millennial shit? What do you, what do you like that? Is, I don't care for new music, shit. man. Only, the only, rap, the only new music that I love right now is my homeboys. I even got my homie shirt on right now. Lil Heart. His new album out called Misunderstood. We all from Trey First Block up in Kenner. It's called Lake like of Mammoth Subdivision. And my little homie, Lil Young Roddy, Lil Heart, they all signed with uh, Jet Life right now with Spitters. And they want they make it movements, bro. They hashtag good sense. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag SWS. That's why I love my hashtags. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag trade first all day, man. Like the music is my life, man. But I like music that I can vibe to, that I can ride to, music that I can listen to and I can t- and I can see the I can hear the hurt and the and 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 the and the confession that somebody's trying to make. Most people don't listen to music like that, bro. Music has to be it has to be an art. It has to be. It has to be poetry. If it ain't poetry, if it's just a bunch of gibberish nonsense, I don't fucking listen to it. You're just trying to be hot, you know. It's Man, like, something look, you feel. It's we are we in an era where people download music. I still go to the store and buy all outcasts. Yeah. I got them in if my CD. If it's not he buys, he's not buying. Man, so, look, he can he, talk he, shit he all day. I'm a very educated motherfucker when it comes to music, all right? And he's I was just listening to listen rap. Way. I listen to Jimi Hendrix. I listen to Garth Brooks. I met motherfucker Toby Keith. I played it. I played my first round of golf on his golf course. I met him through my my judo coach, bro. I'm very knowledgeable of music, but like Jay Z and all of them, bro, they get their music from everybody, bro. The, the guy, the way. guy in the B, right? Him and Dr. Dre are the same people, just one's white, one's black. He did his first what Tom Petty and all those guys, bro. I'm very in tune with music. It doesn't have to be rap because a great rapper, a great artist. They, they they sample all music. They're not one dimensional, bro. And that's how I look at music. So I'm a Gates fan. Have you, have, yeah, have you, Kevin Gates is cool. Have you ever listened to Gates interviews? Yeah. He, 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 he honest. He, he don't give a fuck what you think about him. He loves his woman. And he, and he, he speak, loves he speak on what he loves. That's the same way I am as a fighter, bro. That's I'm what sure. I. That's yeah, why once, look, once you let somebody tell you what to say, yep. you ain't a man. Bro. That's right. That's what I try to tell that. That was never. In two gates, and so I, like, so I, I, said, I no. sat there and listened to Gates interviews. When he tells you he loves what he does, and he'll say he don't leave into the black and white thing. He don't play. No, me I don't still. I was born not to see color. Yeah, I was yeah, raised not to see color. But you want to know something about people? People criticize guys like us who are the the small few of people that have a chance to be great. But in actuality, bro, as human beings, we all could be great. But we choose to be great. Most people choose to be fucking losers, and that's their fault. But because they a loser, they want to bring you back down to where they at. I never let nobody drag me back to a hole. If I climb all the way out the hole, one foot one in, foot out, 
I'd be damned if you grab my foot and say, take me with you, I'm going to shake you the fuck off and let you fall right back mm-hmm. down. Well, most of the people that are like that, bro, are the people that don't have the balls to be what they want to be in life. So they come at well, you and, because and they try to about it. you back. I've been like this. I've been living my childhood dreams since I was 13 years old. I, I said at 13 or 12, 11, I was going to be a UFC fighter. I was a UFC fighter by the age of 22. All right? I've accomplished a lot. I've had a lot of ups. I've had a lot of downs. I've had more ups than downs, though. But only people, all everybody want to magnify the downs. You know, I've, I've, I've been suspended twice for drug use, failing drug tests. I put it out there. It's all you can go Wikipedia. Be. I ain't got, I'll never lie to you. But guess what? That was my fault. That that cost me ten grand every time. Yep. So if you go talk shit and criticize me, how about you give me half the money back? For me paying for my mistake. I paid for my mistakes even when I made them. Some people made mistakes and can't pay for their own mistake. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And I, I never had to I never had to take anything from anybody. They want when you to double down on yours. You know what I'm saying? That's what I love about Brandon, bro. Like we had the same path that he took a different one. But he came back home to me and little Brianna, which is my niece, his daughter, he came back every time. Even when the last two times we asked him not to go. You know what I'm saying? Been blown up several times. He still got all his arms on his legs. You know why? Because he chose him. He chose his life over following orders. I'll take that any day. You know what I'm saying? Some people will follow orders, but don't realize the person giving the orders is weak. I follow my own rules. I live by my own rules. I break rules. I don't, I don't believe in rules. Fuck the government. Fuck all that shit. But I love, the, I love my country. But not many people sit here and say that. They're scared to talk. Man, look, if I don't like you, fuck. If I, like, if I fuck with you, I hug you out there. You be my homie all day. But am I my brother's keeper? I would never say that to nobody other than him, my boy Delshawn, and my boy Chad. And that's three people in my life. That's the only one I can be my brother's keeper with. Everybody else, I don't trust them. And that's real, you know what I'm saying? Trust is the whole thing. Like, well, a lot of people will expect it when they meet you. Man, look, I'm going to tell you how it is. You don't earn respect. You take respect. Yeah. When you take your respect, a lot of times, people are afraid to respect you back. I'm an elf. I'm, I'm born an elf. I'm an Aries all day. Mm-hmm. I'm always going to be a superior. I'm never going to be nobody's mm-hmm. dude, boy. I was about to join a biker crew in Denver, right? I started riding bikes. And this just happened. It was the Hell's Lovers. Pretty cool. Bunch of old dudes. You know, I like being around older guys, right? Man, for me to put a prospect on my fucking vest, I said I couldn't do it. What I did, I started my own bike crew called Savage Riders. Look us up. And I got 20 deep right now. Me, my boy Angelo, and Chad, we the leaders. I started my own crew. I pulled some biker boy shit. It sounded like a movie because it played out just like that. Yeah. I'd rather be my own leader than I have to start from the bottom and take orders from somebody. I can't take orders from somebody. Oh, make sure everybody park their bikes this way. Make sure be no, no, I'm good, bro. I come hang out with y'all, but I got my own shit going on. You know what I'm saying? That's and enough. I started my own bike crew, and I only been riding for a year, literally like full time, right? Dude, it took me two seconds to start my own crew. It started with three, and, and just one week in a ride, bro, we ended up with 20 people. And that's what's up. So, your first time owning the bike? Or just- yeah, first time owning the bike, first time riding, like full time. Yeah, started my own crew. Mm-hmm. I had an idea. What's your ride? You riding cruise or you riding the No, no, no. I was talking to We all ride street bikes, man. The boys pop with Willie James. He heard of <laughs> He's doing stompies. They never even seen him yet. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got like yeah, a, yeah, I got like a real, video, I got a real live like biker boy movie going on in Denver right now, bro. I'm telling you, yeah. that's how, but I don't ride like they ride, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a fighter first, bro. I just ride for fun. I keep up, you know. I, I, I put my bike up to about 180. You know, I go fast, but I ain't popping really. I ain't never go 180, bro. Shit, we I ain't never rode a bike in the four months. I can't even speak on some of the shit. I want to say this: we ride with no license plates. We don't even put plates on our bike. I would tell you, I would never ride a horse. I would, I would never do it. I'm like this, bro. We all gotta die one day. And if I die right now, I live my life. I've been around the world most because I'm on my second pass. So you good? I'm good. Yeah, I'm gonna ride out with a smile. I'm gonna ride out with a smile with my dick hard too. I'm gonna die with a <laughs> Yeah, not a lot of people say that. I've been wrong. But no, but like, not, no, not a lot of people can because people are afraid to. People are afraid to get Take out. Take chances. Of, exactly. So people are afraid to live life, man. If you ain't living, you ain't fucking so dead. So if it wasn't for fighting, what would be the one thing that you would want to do besides fighting? I'd be a mercenary. Brandon trying to talk me out of me right now. I still think about being a mercenary. 
I want to sign yeah. just to go be a mercenary. Brandon, Brandon begging me. Not what is the worst? What are, what are some of the worst places that you've seen? New Orleans. Ooh. Fuck, growing up at home is one of the worst places hey, ever, man. Cedric Richardson would disagree. And it get, it's getting worse. That's not shit. Man, not look, I'm just saying, bro, but I'm talking about. It's when, when I say one of the worst persons I've ever seen, like is it getting culture, worse or is it just social media? Culture, like, sure. like the culture is great, the lifestyle here is great, the people are great, the food is great, but it's a bad fucking place to grow up. You know what I'm saying? There's Everybody, no jobs, and if there's no job, what are people gonna do? They gonna Everybody rock in the walls is a pimple. If you walk down in the French market, look at that 65 year old grandmother. And I promise you, she's got that look in her eye like, bitch, I dare you to move the hands and fast. I don't care what anybody says, New Orleans is a city of pit bulls. The thing is, though, is that you ever notice that you always have at least five. Hold your hand up right now and count five people that you knew growing up in high school that made something of themselves. Mm-hmm. I know you got at least five. The thing is this, why aren't you in that five? Because you didn't excel as fast as you thought everybody else can. And that's what everybody else does. They get sucked into this New Orleans fucking mentality. Yeah, New Orleans is somebody just a bubble. If somebody say you Let's can't do something, they believe it. You tell me I can't do something, I'm going to try 10 mm-hmm. times. I might fail 10. Mm-hmm. I might fail nine times, but I'm going to get it that one time. All you need to do is get it that one time and just be crowned a winner. You only got to win once in life to be a winner. If you know how to win, you're a winner. Some people don't know. Some people Dude, never won anything in their life. The first thing I ever won in my life, major, was the Bush Dewey Award, which is the Kenner Award for, for athletics. The second biggest thing I did was my state, state championship champion. ring in Bonneville High School, which I was the first state champion since 1988, and they haven't had another state championship in any other sport in Bonneville since 2002. I'm the last state champion to walk through that school, bro. I've seen greatness before I even knew I was great. So- there's a question. When's the last time you've been to Bonham? It's been a long time, man. But you know what? Hey, Bonham will be Pete Shellmatt and Bessie. If, oh, if, oh, if, if I'm home and visiting during school, when it's not back think, in, I'll go back and visit. That's what I'm saying. I think we need more. Well, I've been, I've, been offered, I've been offered the job to coach wrestling, but I don't live here. Well, you know? not just necessarily coach, but come back. You're still doing and, your thing. Well, but right now, right now, I'm still, I'm still being a little selfish, but. In the next maybe four or five years, I, I will be I will be opening up my first MMA gym in Kenner in Lake Manor, somewhere off of Loyola. That's my first location. Here, here first. My second location will be in the city of Mallory, uh, somewhere close to New Orleans. My first two gyms will be open here. I've been offered to open gyms in Florida, um, Oklahoma, where I live, um, Denver. I've been offered a gym recently you know, to run. I won't do it. My first gym with my name on is gonna be open right here in my own hometown. And that's what's that's, that's, not, that's not selfish you're being right now. Well, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, I'm still competing. That's so what I'm saying. I, I can't. If I can't give you my time, then I won't you do it. You can't do it. That would be selfish. Right? You know I'm sad. You did so, that. You couldn't. But I want to be able to help the less fortunate kids because when I started fighting and training at the, at the main event, Joey Cullen didn't charge me a gym membership. Yeah, he wasn't the best person in the world. But you know what? I still have a lot of good things to say about the guy. You know what I mean? Understood. He gave me a place to be instead of being on the streets. Instead of selling drugs, I was at main event every day. I'd be upstairs training on a Friday night. It'd be Friday night fights. I'm not even thinking about fights. Somebody not show up, me and Brandon, all right, we'll go down and fight. You we know what I'm saying? We fought before. That's how we fought. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't schedule fights. We just fought. Whoever you know what I'm saying? If, if he and you take the fight, and I, and fight right? it was never, it was We've never, actually it, was, it was never a waste. We've fight. actually fought each other and my because, cousin Calvin. Because the other guy didn't show up, and my cousin we had to fight each other. He needed us to put on the show. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> that's <coughs> that's <coughs> my mentality. But see, that's the things people don't know about. Me. That's it. So that's what, and, and the New Orleans atmosphere, that's the problem. The people that, that do come up, they don't come back. And that's what we no. do. Well, you know what a lot of us do, man. You know, my, my boy Joe McKnight was killed last year, or early this year. R. And that's one of my best friends, bro. Like, I watched that kid grow up on my playground. He came up head. right behind me. He came up right. a few years younger than me. But I mean, guess what? He was killed senseless. Senseless. You know, my boy, my boy, oh, my boy, John, uh, um, um, Jordan, he, he, uh, he, he came up. He was from, uh, really he was from Atlanta. Us. And guess what? He played for the 49ers. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We've had a lot of talent come out of just my neighborhood. All Kenner, all the city of New Orleans for that matter. You know, mm-hmm. Nemesis Bates, 
in prison right now, you know what I'm saying, for being a dumbass, but he got to play for LSU was a star. You know what I'm saying? Played pro ball for yeah. a little bit. How many I was say how many pro how many athletes come out of play for LSU and they go up the Beckhams out. I'll tell you this, bro, we got a lot of talent in this city. But if the education and, part was to back a lot of these talented kids, a lot of these kids will make it out of this place. Well, I just think, I, I just think, think, I just think the school system fucked up. Like, they don't teach you. Up. They don't teach you. It ain't just our school system, system though. though. It's our. Like you said, all it's our. It's our marriage. No, but I was only gonna imagine, right? How many 10, 12, 15 year olds we even Google you and see what you're about, and you come down, you could be a big influence. Man, let me tell you something, bro. When you I get off the play, influence. when I got off the play in China, I'm on, I'm half, I'm on the other. Matter of fact, not halfway. I'm on the other side of the world. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We were exactly 24 hours ahead. I get off. I get off the plane in China, bro. People go crazy over me. I got off the plane in Australia. People go crazy over me. I'm I'm world renowned, but when I'm home, I'm just home. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it doesn't matter about the status. I'm just a voice. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm a voice that can be heard because people are tuning in. So that's why you see me with my homies, little my homie shirt on, repping misunderstood. This is new album. You know what? If I can help them have a little success, why not? They don't want me nothing. I got people paying me to wear their clothes, and I chose not to. I I, I let money go my last fight, yeah. all because I wanted to wear my homeboys and them shit, and I ain't charging a dime because yeah. I'll take that that's all right. day so, over trying to make a dollar. You know, I'm gonna make my money. I'm gonna make money. You know what? Money ain't been good lately, but at the end of the day, man, I'm gonna get my blessings. You living the dream, man. I'm, I'm gonna get my blessings, man. You know what? Sometimes I made big money, and it felt I still felt empty. I mm-hmm. still felt like it, it was nothing there. Because because you know why? It take a, like, I'll put their name on my shit, right? And it take them three months to pay me. It's like Lincoln Park guy. Justin yeah. Lincoln, right? Lincoln Park was one of my best albums, right? Where we're not, because he's not happy. Money don't make no, money don't Look make what happened to Robin Williams, one of the best actors in the world. Money not making right? People don't understand happy. that, man. Being home like tonight, I got to play cards with Granny, my mom. You can't. All my aunties. Them, so I ain't no they, they my white aunties. That was Brandon's family, which right. is my family. Guess what? It's some of them first time meeting me. I've been knowing Brandon and his mom for 15 years. Tonight was the first time I met Brandon's mom. Oh, you and she, like and and she accepted me with open arms, bro. And you know what? Like I had a great time tonight sitting there with all those old ladies playing cards. Me and Brandon, the youngest two in the house. Mm-hmm. Right? Bro, it was, I didn't even want to leave to come do this. I said, Brandon, let's play again. You did. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was not going to leave, bro. And you know what? All of them, I was a stranger to them until now. Now I have another part of family that I can come home and say, man, I want to go see Granny again. You know what I'm saying? That's I, what life is about, bro. Right. So now, in all the places you've been in the world, in all the places I've been in the world, and I'm going to say this from my own point of view. Is there any place that compares to home? Fuck no. The food don't even compare to home. And that's no, the food. Man, you know that. I bro, mean, I, I tell you, I live in New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, there ain't nothing yeah. like New Orleans. Bro. Johnny Cash. Bro, because everything <laughs> in New Orleans is about love and culture and family. And you don't have that nowhere else, bro. But for real, this is this is the real America. Like, this ain't the media. Like, media always trying to divide people and shit like that. Like, man, look, that's what the media is I got about, people. Bro. Like, you know, we close. I got people. It doesn't matter with that. Mm-hmm. Any race, right? No, I'm black, white, bro. That's what I said earlier. I, 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 I was raised not to see color, bro. I go, I go, I go to Chicago. That's how my life is going to be, man. Like, out with my Mexican because, to be honest, man, no, not, no, not one person is alike. You know what I'm saying? Even me and my brothers and sisters, we're nothing alike. We're from the same parent, but every human being is a different person. You're your own person. You have your own thoughts. People are not gonna. You're not supposed to let people think for you. A lot of people in the world, in America especially, they let the government and everybody manipulate them yeah, yeah, yeah. and make them think what they want to know, and then people just jump on bandwagons. I'm gonna tell you something. I've always stuck with since I've been a fighter. People gonna love you. People gonna hate yeah, you. And there's the ones. There's the ones in the yeah. middle that are confused, yeah. so they gonna jump yeah. back and yeah. forth. So this you know what I'm saying? saying? One minute they gonna like you. One minute they gonna fucking hate you. <laughs> And then somewhere around the middle, then when you're doing good, they're going to side with you. When you're doing bad, they're going to jump back and forth. So if that's the case, and that's not just what fighting, that's what your personal life. Everything. You know Everything what I'm saying? Life. When you're doing good, everybody loves you. When something go wrong one time, they forget about all the good. Get, can't get nobody they only care about that one bad thing until something else good happened. Then they're going to jump right back. I've caught, I've caught people like this being in these rooms. I, I remember people with screen names. And then I go and sign stuff for people all the time. 
and I'm in Vegas, I'm signing posts and stuff, and I'm only supposed to sign one, but I'm signing every day. Oh, yeah. And then they tell me, man, man, my screen day, check me out. Then I'll be like, oh, so you so and so 1.52. They'd be like, oh, shit. And I'm like, yeah, I know last time I thought you was talking shit. I catch a grenade and get scared. I still sign everything for them. Because you know why? If I'm going to sign something for you, even when I know you were against me, you about to go make money off my name. So you didn't really mean what you feel. You didn't, you didn't really mean it when you said it. You just said it because out of impulse. So right now, who look like the fucking asshole? You. You begging me for an autograph to go sell. Well, yet, last two, last two, three fights ago, you said, that was a piece of shit. That was a sugar tire. That was a cocaine. That was this. You know what? At the end of the day, I'm fucking with it. Because my name is always going to be worth something. Because I could die right now, today, or tomorrow. And I'm going to same, I'm, I'm live in the same category as, as Muhammad Ali and all the other greats. You know why? Because no matter if I die today or tomorrow, people still want to talk about me. I heard yeah. you say, oh, same thing in a, in a Tupac interview one time. He was in jail. And, uh, a skinhead came up and asked him for an interview, uh, autograph for his nephew. He said, man, you can't be racist if you're going to uh, get an autograph of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't. You can't. You can't. It's I'm telling you, after I was 15. I'm going to go back and get an autograph. I, was, I used to work in a Superdome, right? Some merchandise. I was, I was, when I was 15 years old, Shaquille O'Neal came there, <clears throat> played, when he played for Atlanta Match, right? 14, 15 year old little white kid. Dennis Anderson, Nick, Nick Scott. Shaq walked in off the bus. Exhibition game. About Shaq the Exhibition game. Right? Come straight off the bus. Shaq, I got a program. Shaq, I'm looking at him at his belly button. Me to you. Shaq, you signed this program for me. It's said $25 a left. That was, that was $25 a left. I'm like, Shaq, for real? You said $25 a left. Now you stood there. I said, 3D was what Dan Scott. You signed it? I said, yes, sir. Sign it. Nick Anderson signed it. I said, Shaq, you're going to sign it. He said, man, I told you 25 letter. 15 years old. I can't afford that, though. He literally walked, turned around and walked off with the three of them and didn't sign up my program. My first pair of MMA shorts when I fought Josh Neer, my first, you my first MMA fight after Ultimate Fighter, the person I, I walk out the ring and see was Shaquille O'Neal. Uh -huh. I was covered in blood. I had, I cut him over, but I lost. I got caught in the choke, right? My shorts got blood on I took my shorts off right there. I signed them to Shaq. Yeah. Gave my bloody shorts to Shaquille O'Neal. My first ever pair of UFC shorts. When I say that was the only cat, I got Charles Barkley. I got uh, David Robinson. I got, when I say I got autographs. Bro, I played golf with a lot of these guys. I got Jordan, autographs. Me and Ricky Fowler are best friends. I played golf with I got them. autographs. No, a lot of golf. You know, Rich Hamilton, that's one of my best friends. He's like my big brother. I met Eddie George because of him. I met Ryan Harper because of him. I live in South Florida, so yeah. I played golf with all these guys. Eddie Chris, George, Chris Carter. Chris Carter, the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Me, me and Michael Irvin, he's like one of my mentors. He's my best friend. I see him all the time, right? Bro, when I see these guys, though, they just normal guys to me. When yeah. I first met them, though, I was starstruck. No, but, okay. but I never asked for autographs yeah. because I'm, I'm one of them. Yeah. And then it's like they accepted me as a little brother. I still keep in touch with all of them. I can call them right now if I wanted to on my phone. You know? okay. And to be around people that I looked up to, you know what I'm saying? And you know what? Whether they were winning games or they were fucking losing games, no, even when I was just a fan, I never not liked them because they lost. I liked them because, you know what? They were doing something great. And I was like, you know what? I want to be baby. Yeah. That's how I look at greatness. You know what I'm saying? Even if I wasn't good at uh, that great at football, uh, that, I wasn't great at basketball. My only cut me twice. You know what I'm saying? I hate basketball because of it. Uh -huh. But at the same time, I found my niche. Fighting was my niche. It started with wrestling, but that was my niche. Not many people go searching for what they're great at. Some people just settle. People got dead end jobs. People hate. They get they make decent money, but they hate their fucking job. They uh -huh. they sit in the fucking cubicle all day. That's oh, what? Even, even the McDonald's. The ones in the cubicles are the ones that's working right now that's in this goddamn message room that's messages on the goddamn <laughs> computer. But guess what? Might not be all of y'all. If it don't apply, let it fly. But it's all respect and love. But at the same time, my job is to travel the world and beat people up and get paid for it. Mm -hmm. It's either that or I fucking continue, so, continue I as a gangbanger growing up. And I'd end up either dead in jail already for doing the same shit that I get paid for today. I kill bugs for a living. That's, Come on, what, I man. That's what I do when I Come on. Work. I could have had one or the other. It was the same job, but I could have had one or the other. Yep. I chose the high road. Yep. And you glorified for so it. I, I used to train Mickey Loomis. I, I had Mickey Loomis, one of my personal customers, right? 
And people are like, well, man, why are you, you not tripped out? I'm like, nah, dude, it's just, it's just a regular catch. But he's, he's Mickey Lewis. He, he runs, he's a GM of the Saints. Da, 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 da. It is bro, I bet. Bro, I've never put, since I, I got, sat, I got humble when Shaq told me. I got, 25, I got I autographed black and white photo of Muhammad Ali who was 17 and Angelo Dundee, his trainer. Angelo Dundee gave it to me originally in Houston, right? Got his son. Uh, Mr. Mr. Muhammad Ali, I fought at the Boer Vibes. Layla Ali was fighting up the street at the Grand Casino. I'll never forget it. I said, man, let me, I, I brought my poster with me because I knew she was fighting, right? Yeah. I said, man, I might get to meet Muhammad Ali for the first time. Sure enough, I meet Mr. Muhammad Ali in the lobby with his wife at the time and his handlers. He's in his wheelchair. I say, Mr. Ali, nice to meet you. He shook my hand. Parkinson's and everything, right? I say, hey, I don't mean to bother you. I pulled it out the manila post. I said, but this was given to me by your coach and past trainer, Mr. Angelo Dundee. Mr. Dundee was dead now. Yeah. Mr. Ali looked at it. I never asked him to sign it. I said, I just wanted to know. I just wanted to let you see that I had this. You know, and it's special to me. It's Angelo Dundee standing at the, at the end of the ring talking to Muhammad Ali, but they were both, I guess they stopped and took a picture. Yeah. Bro, Mr. Ali saw it. I was getting ready to slide it back in. He put his hand up and his He said, uh. And he said, he, he made the motion of signing it. I said, no, no, you don't have to sign it. I just want you to know I had it. He signed it. I still have that freaking eight by ten. That's priceless. It's priceless. And guess what? I'll never fucking sell it. Yeah. I, 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 I recently, never sell it, bro. In the last four months, I bought a poster from 1978 when Ali and the Sphinx fought. For the Sphinx? Fought in the Superdome. Yeah. An original print poster. Oh, that was it. 78. Yeah. I still got that. In a plastic wrap. So got that poster. Bro, I got that manila folder laminated. I got that sucker laminated with the picture inside of it, bro. It would never get on dry, and I'll never suck it. You know what? If I have a kid or something, maybe it might, it might do some good one day. But I was watching porn stars today, and I was like, oh, they sitting on old fake ass little Beatles guitar. Yep. I, got two, I got two, I two yeah. real authenticated signatures, you know what I'm saying? Because but, I was there, but, nobody gave it to me. I, but, I got that shit. But through Mickey, I got, I got a lot of, I, I got autographs. I mean, I, I, that's what I, that's what I do. I got, um, a lot of shit I buy the online. I'm a cup fan. I'm a Saint. I'm a Saints fan. I I went to the Super Bowl. I went to Saints fan since after Katrina. I never lied. I, went, I, I bought a ticket. I'm a yeah, paid. I'm a paid Manning fan though. Paid man. This is my favorite. My favorite football ticket, player of all time. I bought the thirteen hundred fifty dollars ticket to yep. see the Saints in the Amen. Super Bowl in two thousand and nine. I was in Miami when the Saints won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Where was you at? I was in Vegas. I fought the night before. For the night. Yep, so, I fought the night. He paid all that money. He paid all. I was in Vegas fighting. <laughs> I, I, I went into. I fought on a Saturday night. February and I 8th. went to the books. February eighth. I went to the books. I fought Hines Torres. I know. You know what? I went to the books. Yeah. Fuck both of y'all. I was in the desert in fucking Baghdad, and I watched it on 19 inch TV with fucking aluminum foil and rabbit. Yeah, I, 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 I was at Baghdad. 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 If you was in New Orleans when the Saints won the Super Bowl, you couldn't tell I missed the parade and everything. So you so you couldn't not, tell one person anything because we New Orleans won. Yeah, but you know what? You it brought the city together. You couldn't man. touch New Orleans. And the city been strong before that, but it's even stronger now. That's why I love my city, bro. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Look, they, they, no matter what city, what part of the country, part of the world you go to, they gonna always have poverty. They always have crime. So one one doesn't outweigh the other with me. You know what I'm saying? Because there's more poor people in this world than there is rich. All right. Mm -hmm. My thing is, when something go wrong in this city, this city comes together. So if you something yeah, right, if something go right yes, with this city, it. we yeah, still we still got each other. You know what I'm saying? You, I've seen certain cities be divided, like California, for instance. We Oakland Raiders fans. We San Francisco 49ers fans, you know, they came to play football together no more oh, because they can't you know, kill that damn game. They beat Bro, each other up. Let you know, man, look, we can go to Atlanta. We can go halfway around the world. Next, next year, I think we're supposed to play over in, in, London, in London, London, right? Yep. Guess what? We're going to go over there. And I live in Florida. I live in you South Florida. No guess what? I know. Well, this should be right. And yeah. guess what? I'm going to be over there for a fight, so I'm definitely going to that game. We and guess what? We we're gonna to take, we're gonna take this, we're, gonna, the we're gonna take that southern hospitality and we're gonna give it to fucking Florida, we're gonna whip that ass. And guess what? We're, we're gonna, gonna be way, we're gonna be way in London 
doing a fucking second run after the game. Watch and they're gonna be in there with us. They gonna be Come on, man. Oh, yeah. We got umbrellas in the air. We gonna, hey, we gonna turn Manchester we, we, United and Man United. City United fans in the Saints fans. Wow. Fishing too. So, we'll, your your biggest uh, proudest moment in New Orleans when you you touch down and come back. Is there one one thing that man just, just touched just coming home, just coming home and seeing family, spending time with family, man. Like that's that's always my. Yeah, I remember when I was in the military. That, that's you know, me just being able to come home and see my friends I can work with, ex girlfriends that I can be like, ha ha ha. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit like that, bro. Like look at you now. Yeah, I mean, you know, at the same time, bro, it's like when everybody, when everybody thought. That I was gonna lose or fail, or I should have been dead. I had my principal tell me one time, I thought you're gonna be dead in jail till I fought all the time, right? Yeah. I went back after I was all I went back. No, no, I wasn't. I just I just did like bullies. I beat bullies up. Mm-hmm. I was a protector. I go back to my high That's school cool. after fucking after Ultimate Fighter. Oh, I know, forget That's it. That's what we need to bring back the show. You after I went on Ultimate Fighter, and I went oh, back, I went straight home. Well, no, no, no. I went straight home, home, bro, and I went right back to my high school. Mm-hmm. And my same principal that told me I wasn't going to be shit was going to be the dead Mr. Ferreira. And I forget it. He looked at me, he's like, oh, I ain't got your privacy, man. I, I've been following you, blah, blah, blah. I looked at this man in his eyes and said, man, you know what? I came back just so I could tell you, fuck you, and thank you for doubting me. Yeah. And that's that's the greatest feeling in the world, bro. Like what people tell me like, right, right now, people still don't feel I can be a UFC world champion. People still don't feel I can be a Bellator world champion. I will be. Why not? I will be. I'm not done. That's what I'm saying. People, people, that's how you know. Know. people keep throwing that, oh, you need to retire. Tell me what I they mean, doing. Like, let me tell you this. Most people retire when they That's what somebody's they asking on here. Man, I'm 34. When, when, when I'm, 34 years, I'm 34 years old, bro. Why I got to be done? That's because most asking. fighters start fighting at 27, 25, 28. I've been fighting since I was 14. Look at Bernard Hopkins. Because man. I've been around so long, though, people think I'm a lot older. I'm not. I'm a baby in the sport, bro. I'm still young. I'm not I'm not done. Look at Bernard Hopkins. You know what I'm saying? I haven't years. taken any damage. My last three fights, I've taken the most damage in my career in my last three fights. Oh, and I have oh, my whole career. Yeah. Come on, bro. Why you got to be Bernard Hopkins, Bernard, Bernard Hopkins came back. He won a fucking new world title at the age of 50-something. Y'all Randy asking, Couture was a champion to tell you was fucking 47. Y'all asking this man if he's done yet. Y'all, 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 Herschel y'all, y'all, Walker wasn't even a five fighter. Players. He jumped into Bellator and still beat some people up at the age of 50. Why do I have to quit? Why is it so, so important? Why is it so important for the world to tell me quit? quit. That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know from the fans. Why is it that important for everybody to tell me quit? But when I go and fight, y'all tune in to watch me because y'all say, oh, no, you're one of the most exciting fighters I ever watched. Win or lose. If you're gonna compliment me, why would I lose? You fucking doubt me. You know what I mean? That's oh, like, you you like, like they right? contradict themselves. They that because people like that, you all right? Answer? People like that A got more than one baby mama. They got ten kids for five different women. I don't have none of that negative shit going on in my life. You know what I'm saying? I got one wife for ten years. My wife got girlfriends, and I'm happy with that. Mm-hmm. Guess what? I love my life. Can't nobody take my life from me. I work hard for this every day. You know what I'm saying? Even when I'm out and had a home just chilling with family. But when it's time to put my work in, I put my work in. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I can come and go as freely as I want. I don't have no baby mama drama. I ain't no child support. I'm not, I'm not fucking a, a, a slave to the government. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, I'm my own man. I'm a free spirit. And I just put I, I finish it like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to always do what I want, how I want. And my dad always said, make sure you be a, a respectable man and you be a stand-up man and don't live in no regret, but do it your way. My dad told me that on his, di- on his deathbed. And you know what? Since then, I've been living it up. And I am not I am not one minute, not, not even a little bit upset with my life. I love my life, man. But at the same time, like I can support my little homies and everybody. I want to see them spread their wings. So and, and put their music so in that. London. So what? So what's what's their next move? What, 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 how about this? What is that name? I got, I got, I got, I got, no, I got, 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 I'm already late for it. We've been doing this for an hour and a half. But you know what? I'd rather let the whole world know about them because I was in London 
for my last bare knuckle fight, July 1st, right? Yeah. I'm sitting there at Wins, bro. All I'm doing is listening to music through my little beach pill, right? So but, I got, but I got the music blasting through everything. It's quiet in there. Yeah. The owner of this company is a British guy. I'm talking like billionaire. He's, he's an heiress. You know what I'm saying? The money, yeah. he's, a, he's, he's married into money, right? This man that he probably never heard rap music in his life. He walks up to me. No, who is that? Man, that sounds good because they poets. I told him who they were. This man went on his phone and downloaded all their music and brought every last album that they had. And this, and this man wouldn't have known nothing about these kids yeah. had I not I, been listening to it. That's the shit I care about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about me. It's bigger than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a voice. You know what I mean? But I'm a voice that everybody want to see and want to hear. So guess what? If I if I can help a little kid sell the rest of her Girl Scout cookies because I'm present there and say, hey, for every autograph I sign, buy two boxes of cookies. You have people buying five boxes of cookies because it's me. So Absolutely. guess what? I did that kid a favor. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? That's a blessing. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at my life, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a walking testimony, bro. That's all it is, bro, because you know why? People like me is, is a voice, so you need people like us, but if more people like me, look like I think of myself a lot more than just a fighter. Yes. You know what I mean? I look at myself like when I come into when I came into this world, I, I came in as as a somebody. I just didn't know who I was yet. Mm -hmm. I still have my flaws. I still have made my mistakes. I still have my habits. But at the same time, I'll put somebody else before I put myself. And that's why I I I, I regret not going to the military. Because if I had to make that life and death decision to choose some to choose my battalion or my team or my crew to live before me, I'd be the person that would jump on that grenade. Most people wouldn't do that. But I never had that opportunity. You know what I'm saying? But I I have that same thought and that same and that same vibe and that same personality about me, even as a civilian. Because if I gotta put myself before everybody else, I'm gonna know I'm never gonna be amount to nothing. But when you're willing to sacrifice, and I'm, I'm always going to be a leader, but if I'm willing to sacrifice who I am to benefit somebody else, yeah. you know, it could be a homeless person. You know what I'm saying? That homeless person, man, I might get that homeless person 100 bucks. He might really go take that 100 bucks and start. And, and he might gamble flip it or something, or flip it. And guess what? He might be a, a fucking millionaire 10 years later from that $100 I gave him. Yeah. That's possible. Yeah. People, people think the impossible is impossible, and it's not. Everything's possible, bro, in this world, man. I, I try to be, I mean, I don't make money. It's though. about being I'm, I'm on this but it ain't about, it ain't about making money, bro. It's about but, being a voice and being a positive but, person but, because guess what? I'm like this. I speak shit into existence, bro. Yeah. I walked into I walk into Harris Casino two nights ago, two mornings ago. Bro, I had $100 left in my pocket. I bet a $25 uh, ace, a $25 12 straight up high low. I said, I, and it was my role when I walked up. There was an empty table that had maybe five people. They had, just, they said, oh, you playing? All right, cool. I took the dice, bro. I grabbed the dice. I said, man, give me my 12. I threw the dice and looked away. Boom, 12. So right? 750 right out the gate. I, I doubled it. I said, man, put 100 on each. I said, all right, he come there. I said, face down, ass up. That's what I call it. You got the eyes, you got the ass, right? Yeah. I said, right, I had the ass, and I look at you, bitch. I took the dice, did the same thing. Boom, fucking aces here. Fourteen thousand dollars on two rows. Two rows. Two rows. Right. All because I spoke it into existence, and I and I even if it wouldn't hit, that's my mentality when I'm shooting. You know what I mean? Like shooting, like when you gambling. To me, it ain't gambling. It's all by design, but it's what you believe in. If you don't believe you gonna fucking win money, you ain't gonna win no money. That's what we try. Right? That's, that's what life is about. If you don't believe you gonna come home from the military, right? If yeah. you go to war. You know what I'm saying? Brandon has been in some of the worst places in the world, right? If you don't believe you coming home, you ain't coming home. If you doubt yourself for one second, you ain't coming home. If you start thinking about back home and thinking about your girl and, and you whatever, you ain't coming home. You got to be a fucking savage. Savage, savage. savage. savage is like my thing. Hashtag savage rider. Hashtag savage life. You have to be a savage. Be a savage means you do anything at any cost. I'll sacrifice my queen to check me. Every time I learned that from an old guy playing chess, and that fucking nothing to do with the chess game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Are uh, you willing to sacrifice your most prized possession? I tell people this: my favorite movie is the movie Troy. I would be Achilles. I got my wife on the right arm, but all our bitches like right with us, right? 
that's my lifestyle. But guess what? My wife will always be my my, my, my number one. Without her, I can't I can't function. But guess what? If I had to sacrifice my wife for me to live, and like let's say Armageddon happened, and the fucking world did come to an end, if she become more of a fucking problem than she is a solution for me to live, then guess what? I might have to kill her because it's gonna help me live that much longer. Now, if she on the same page, we gonna, we gonna take over this shit together. That's my wife though. My wife is a piece. Yeah. But at the same time, she's not even a fighter, <clears throat> but she can she can protect me. My wife protected me before against men. You know what I'm saying? But she didn't know shit about that when she first met me. I had to train her. But she was teachable. Most people are not teachable, man. You know what I'm saying? That's life. Well, I, I, like I said, you talked about speaking into existence. That's, that's kind you of what we do. Into existence. That's what we kind of do. We're going to use it after this. You know that? Yeah, speak that into existence. That's well, what we're doing sleeping. with this podcast. We're going to be sleeping. We're going to be sleeping. We did this podcast. We started this podcast back in December, right? We, we just speak it. I kept telling Paul. Paul's not here tonight. I mean, this, we this, just keep doing it. Now. I don't it'll, know it'll, it'll, it'll happen. It'll happen. But seven months so, later, man, you have to like this. this. Think of it like this. Think of it like this. If you say you're gonna be a loser, you're gonna be a loser. Yeah. It's not hard to be a loser, right? right? No. But it's just as easy to be a fucking winner. Yeah. People think winning. People think winning is hard. It's not hard. You get what you put into it. Because some people really want to be homeless. I live in Denver half the year. There are people that's homeless because it's cheaper for them to be that's, homeless. That's why we. That's why we need more positive. Influences like Brandon that that that's then live a hard life. Now, when, I, when I say hard, life is hard though. We think I, it's listen, I've been through a lot. And I it's first, and, and I, but I can't compare my life to yours and his. I, to me, well, I we don't like to compare our lives to anybody. We all come from something that's really hard. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, all, look, life is all, either gonna do one or two things, like Dana White said, and I never forget it. It's either gonna make you or break you, and most people don't mind being broke. I didn't know if he said right. that, but I thought that. When no, said he that. said that. To no, 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 that's the first two words he, he said. Like, us on all fighter, bro. Yeah. All right? It's either gonna make you or it's gonna break you. Mm-hmm. But look, I love testing myself. I love pushing myself to that limit. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Mm-hmm. I love it. You know why? Because when I lose, I I can always look back and say, at least I pushed myself to that limit to see if I could do it. You know what I'm saying? And I've had a lot of great success. I've run into a little couple of those speed bumps lately, but it ain't broke my morale. I just looked at it like, man, look, I fought outside my weight class. I tried to test the waters. And I, now I need to stop being lazy and go my ass back down to 155. And I watched when this happened. Damn, true. And I watched when this happened and I start beating everybody and I give me a little seven, eight white win streak. So everybody going to be sucking my dick again. So who's that dude to get Melvin back in New Orleans to fight? Man, look, I'll come back home and promote a fight. Like, right now is the time to do it. If I'm going to be able to fight in New Orleans, which I've been wanting to fight in my own time for a long time, you man, look, Rich Clemente, I'll fight him right now at an open weight. When he, look, I don't care what weight he is. He's already fat right now. I don't care. But that's the fight everybody in New Orleans wants to see. Who's going to be the king of New Orleans? I've always been the king. When was the last time you fought, Rich? Well, in the UFC. UFC 71, Nemesis. But I was so angry, and I hated him so much, I fought angry for the first time in my career, and I lost. Mm-hmm. But then I asked him about that ass whooping I gave him in Thibodeau at Ricky Foster's fights in the back. When he came in through the back, he'll never talk about that. The cops gave us one round when I beat his ass, and they said, "All right, anything after that, we'll have to take you out of jail." He, he won't talk about that, but he got he got me on the on the TV on the big scale. He, everybody's seen it. Tell him fight me now, see what happens. So we can't. Uh, who do we? How do we get Battle Club to come to New Orleans? I don't know. They may they may come to New Orleans. I don't, Orleans, so I don't know. I don't yeah. know when they'll come. But it don't have to be a Bellator star. Let's do it on let's do it on let's do it on Coach Warren's show. I look for sir. Yeah, let's do it on a local circuit. You, you, let, you let, look, Rich Clemente is the promoter anyway. Let him promote it and we'll split the game. Own fight. Let, let him promote his own so fight. So Mr. Rich, no love. Yeah, tell no love. Right in. Promote the fight. Right in. Right? I tell him I'll give him six, eight months to get ready for the fight and, and, so he can cut weight and get in shape. I'll give, I'll give him Brandon's that. Brandon's on a dial or what? Look, 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 look. When that Brandon, when that Brandon beat a co-main event against JC and I'll fight Rich as the main event. And look, we split the game. We, we all make money. Let's do it like that. We all make money. Uh, Everybody makes money. I'll take JC. No, tell him. Tell him. No, tell him. No, real. For real. Tell him. I'm gonna knock him out. I can have my phone. It's great right now. I'm gonna knock him out. Go and make it happen. We'll split. We'll split the promotional money fifty-fifty. But the fight perks. Let's say want to take off. Bird. That's how I want to go. I want. I want it all. I want all or nothing. Monday morning. Where to be at? No, let's do it. I'm here. I'm here to our way. You want to slide out? Let's do it. I'm going to slide out.
Somebody, somebody on here yeah. gonna yeah. leak it. Somebody yeah. gonna tell him what I said, yeah. so he'll get the message. I'm going out there Monday morning. What are you gonna do? What, all right, the only thing he gonna do is shy away. Oh, I already beat him before. Yeah, you beat a young, angry kid. Now you about to fight a well seasoned, mature man. In New Orleans, you gonna fight a mature man? Yeah, let's do it in New Orleans. No matter where, right? No matter where. You're the same time. Hey, if he wants to, bro, we can do a backyard thing too. We can do the bare knuckle thing. I'll fight him up over anywhere, anytime, any place. I'm serious. Where you at, friend? Like, this, this is a fight that I, I'm I, not I say he'll be the first loss I've ever had that I've avenged because I've never fought somebody twice in my career. Now we're talking some real shit. We're talking some real real shit. We're oh yeah, this money. is real. That's why he never fought me again. He knew I beat him. Man, look, bro. Right, he knew I beat him. Let's let's get this money, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like hey, maybe you were rich. Look, maybe we can do it. We can do it on a yeah, small scale. Because I mean, we ain't yeah, we ain't right. talking no billions or nothing like that. But shit, I'm talking like shit, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. We can make some money. But because yeah. everybody in New Orleans, everybody yeah. just in Louisiana, not just New Orleans, everybody in Louisiana and the surrounding states like. Biloxi and other things that we fought in before and we competed together, where Rich has a name, guess what? People going to show up they to fight. They're going to show up to see us. Plus, I'm they the biggest all. name. He was always in my shot. Now, I was I'm, always the most popular fighter out of New Orleans. But here's the thing. You have fought. I mean, recently, so I mean. I've had more success than Rich in the UFC, too. Because when he came back and beat me, he had one fight after that loss and they got rid of his ass again. Understood. Come on, man. Understood. So, and the only reason he fought no. me the first time was because I asked Dana for that fight. I said, Dana, I know this guy from back home. I'll take the fight. But I was angry. I didn't like him. I hate him. I still hate that motherfucker. But I still agree with the same mindset we've been having is that we are well above local hometown here. Yeah, right? bro. But you know what? It ain't so, about that, bro. It's about coming home. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get Melvin to come back to the, to the Man, house. Man, look. I'm out of money, bro. I'm out of money. Anybody that is known in local. In Louisiana, New Orleans is a local hometown hero in their weight class. So if Rich, you want to fight and not be a local hometown hero, we got one. The one fight that has not been settled, let me fight your best guy. And JC, you're a talented fighter. I don't even know what's crazy. I never liked Rich, but I always liked JC. I like JC. I always liked Kyle Bradley. Me and Kyle Bradley are cool. You're a talented fighter. I like everybody. I like that racist piece of shit. Rich Clemente, he's a racist piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? He always was. I always have was. You know what? And the sad part was I respected that guy when I first met him because I I had known him as a guy that beat my my high school wrestling coach, Warren Donnelly. That's how I met Rich. And then Rich showed up at main event one time. He was training with me for a while. Yeah. But then when I started getting a lot of praise and a lot of a lot of spotlight, all of a sudden he just started not liking me. He felt threatened by me. So, so he's he, like he, a bitch. When a bitch so gets threatened by you, she get attitude. So he was trying to he was he started to get your your stance, your alpha male, yeah. and he felt threatened. Yeah, he, I threatened this man who brought my alpha. He knew it. But he was fighting one dimensional fighters. You know what I'm saying? The only reason that dude beat me was because I was angry. Because after the fight, they didn't beat me. They said, Melvin, if you go out, out, and I say, bro, when I see you out in Vegas tonight, and I, was, I went around looking for it. I said, bro, when I see you in Vegas tonight, yeah, respect me, get your shit done. Push that. Uh, and then that's when they didn't step in. Melvin, if you go out tonight and get any trouble in Vegas, that's my city. If you get in any trouble after tonight, after this fight tonight, you off, you off the roster. That was the only reason why I didn't do nothing. And then a few months later, I came home on that Ricky Foster show. That motherfucker walked in through the back doors of that fucking temple, old fucking Civic Center, and I fucking I went in on him. He even walked up to me and tried to shake my head with a smile on his face. I hit him. Wow. The cops let us fight. I beat the shit out of him. He won't talk about it. I got up. I said, all right, that's round one. Let's go outside now. Cops are like, if y'all go outside and fight again, I'm going to take y'all to jail. I said, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to jail tonight. I said, Rich, come outside. The whole night. That was when Shorty Carter was in town. Yeah. And they had the Timberdale parades, and we rode in the parade the next day. Rich would not come out from the stands, bro. He would never talk about that, but he would no. talk about the shit they got on TV. No, let's go on there. We talking about parades. I can get you riding. I would ride. I'd have rode a parade a long time. Free to ride. I'll ride, bro. Free to ride in a pretty show, man. I'm down. King. I'm down. You're running. Nigga, I'm there. Please. I love for real. I got you. Yeah, I'm serious. I'll be here. I'll be home for that. I got you. I'll be home for that. I think we should promote the fight. I think we should promote the fight to happen during 
Mardi Gras weekend. February. We can White Friday night. Why not? That's White Friday time. night. Have the great time. Who? 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 But why not fucking sell that fight for fucking the biggest time of the year when we're going to have See, a lot of people here? Time. And we can be... do it somewhat, baby. Yo, we're going to have enough people here yeah. so, so we promote that fight. And they see my name on the fucking thing. Mel was the last fight this weekend. Oh, shit, I came to Morning Girl. I didn't even know Mel was fighting. Now people got, people got, people get two, they get two, two rewards. They get to come from Morning Girl and get to see me they fight. They get to see some titties and see Mel Girl. Bro, I'm telling you, bro, I, I know for a fact we can make this fight happen because I know Rich. He's got an ego. You know what I'm saying? All I gotta do is talk a little shit. He'll take it. Right? What if you don't want to play? What is it? Then he'll pussy. Whoa! No, 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 no. Throw up a grudge match. Rich and his number one student versus. We'll do a, hey, we'll we'll do a tag team fight. fight. We'll do a two on two fight. We'll, we'll start fighting. Start fighting. Yeah, yeah, do something. Something. Why not? Hey, hey, I know I know the commissioners in New Orleans, bro. They, they had me commissioned when I was too young at 16. I can get the commissioners to do it. And then, you know what? Joe and Kona, believe it or not, that's the motherfucker that can make that shit happen. Yeah. He make it happen. Yeah. He'll make it happen. Everybody make money. Why not? We all gonna make money. Why not? Why not, bro? I think it's a brilliant idea right now. We can be on that, dog. And we can perform. We can do it. We can make money. We can perform. We can bring it all home together. Misunderstood? Yep. Lil Hog, Young Roddy, Jet Life. I have all of us. I have a performance. We'll do the intermission. We'll let them do us. We'll let them do their sets during the intermission. And then we'll be the grand finale. If all we happen to do a Mardi Gras, I think that's the best time to get to a fight. Because we got all the people here. We got all the money that's going to be in the town. I'll have his nemesis. If Rich no. want hey, look, Rich, no hard feelings. If you want this, come get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm asking for it. Because I, I, I think, look, you won one, I won one. I think we should have this grudge match. Just because one happened on national TV, don't make it seem like the other one didn't happen. And you know it happened. And it and it can be what? Millions of It's just can be bro, it, we can make some money, bro. Make some money. Some I'm not gonna over exaggerate the money. Yeah. But I know we can make I know both of us can make more than hundred thousand each. Right. But we're gonna take all for, for the fight itself. But we'll split we'll split the we'll split the promotion money straight up. I'm down, I'm so down. Who wants to see it? It's up. And I'm saying we, we So uh Chris and make it happen. So let uh I will I will personally I'm gonna knock on doors on Monday. Let's do it. He gonna go. He gonna go door to door. No, I'm going. I'm going to the one fucking door. Going to the source. I'm going to the fuck straight to the fucking source. I'm going to Rich's fucking gym. He gonna give y'all a little smirk ass laugh. I ain't I, fucking look, smirk. look, I'm gonna tell you what you gonna do. <laughs> I already beat him. What are you talking about? They'd be like, well, what happened at the at the Civic Center in in Homer, the Homer Civic Center? You know, on Ricky Foster's car. Ask him what happened about that. And I got a lot of witnesses. Like I got, I, mean, I got, I got certified witnesses. Like Warren Donnelly, my my bat, me my. Uh, my wrestling coach, he was there. We were standing there. Shoney Carter. We called Mr. Shoney Carter, Mr. International. And he lives in Chicago. We called Shoney up and Shoney. Man, look, we, I don't have to lie. It's like lying on my dick. I wouldn't lie on my dick. If I fucked your bitch, I fucked your bitch. He's ready. I'm down, bro. Let's, uh, give me one more minute. Music wrestling real quick. Oh, we want to go? Oh, we want to wrap it up. Yeah, we're about to wrap it up. Come on, Duncan, come on. Anybody got any questions before we go? They boy in there, possible? No, let's see. Nah, he's stopping there. You got to Now, I know Leo is not a very nice person. Let's see. What do you say? Park your bike so other people don't have to slalom ride through the park. It's it's everyone for themselves. Very disparity not looking up to. Very disparity not looking up to. They need something to better themselves. Me and you need something to better ourselves. What you need something to better yourselves? <laughs> I don't know. What are they talking about? I don't know. I guess I it's fucking... I told you they got a bunch of scrap back to stuff. Oh, man. I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about himself. He probably drunk. Somebody yeah. said, make an established name and build a team. What are y'all doing? What are y'all talking about? See what I'm saying? Michael Oh, Thorne. he's talking... No, 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 no. No one's like, no one's in the motherfucking house. I made the last statement, so... That's saying for he's reading it, too. Leo, Leo Spadoni. Yeah, Leo Spadoni. I don't know. I don't think it makes any fucking sense. He might be drinking like us. 
Yeah, but we make it sense. <laughs> I don't know. know. Grab back to stun back. Hey, shit. Leo, yeah. you still watching? Still up. This is what I'm at, Mel. Uh, so you staying with me for the, for the, for the week? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be back up between here and my mom's house. Oh, we all like. So what if. Like, like all of us moving around, right? So, so you going to watch yourself? Man? I'm staying up. Well, well, I'm so sitting down right here, man. Oh, I don't know what happened there. If I was to ask you to do one favor, would you come have a sit down at any place in St. Bernard, restaurant wise, and do a little sit down and do a little autograph line, or chat with the kids and and people are like that? He wants to do something for the kids. He wants to do something for the kids. He does. He does do a lot. Normally, when I do signings, unless it's charity, like I'll charge like a thousand dollars. Strictly signs. Strictly charity. Yeah. Strictly for you. Yeah, the money yeah, making. Yeah, yeah, I know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, do something like that. Yeah, usually, like stuff a like, little hour deal. We get we're pulling in a, a local spot. I don't know what spot yet. The next day or two, I find a spot where you can just come man, in. Man, you tell them just count money, burn his bills, and all my drinks for the night. And I'll come. I, I Maybe might have a spot too, and we'll do that. Maybe yeah, I'm, good. I'm down. We can do it before we leave. Wow, Nico. Wow, Nico. Well, Nico was a good bro. The guy, that, the guy that owns Wild was one of my students. Yeah. Anyway, guys, look, we're going to wrap this up. So, well, yeah, let's, let's wrap this up. up. Hey, let's wrap this up. Oh, we'll talk so about that uh, yeah. We'll see y'all Sunday. Hopefully, we'll, we'll get some. I'll come back on Sunday, Sunday man. I'm oh, 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 you know what I'm saying? And we come to a man's for all the fans. Because you know what? At the end of the day, we're going to do it for the fans. Come on. We're going to do it for the fans in New Orleans. Because it ain't, this ain't about a world stage. You know what I'm saying? It no, is what it is. This is, about, this is about who's the baddest motherfucker come out of Louisiana repping on a, on a global scale. You know what I'm saying? I've had way more success than this chunk. <laughs> I'm always going to have more success than this chunk. You know what I'm saying? He's a fat, rat bastard piece of shit scumbag. All right? And I'm saying it right now out of my own mouth. I don't fucking like you. I never did. But this time, like I said, you don't have no young, immature, angry little young kid trying to fight you. You gonna have a fucking well seasoned vet veteran that's gonna put you on your ass. And I'm not knocking you out in the first round. I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you for at least You're two. Trying to hurt him, motherfucker. Oh, I'm gonna hurt him. So, right. so let's do this. Let's so, go for Mardi Gras. So we got signs. We're manning up. Offers on the table. We're up. Offers on the table. We got offers on the table. We got, got, table. Table. got, got Mr. Gallard, who's gonna sign up on. He said Sunday. Just well, we're going to try to do this on a grandest scale, right? We're going to try to find some way where... Man, look, let's make this money, bro. Make the money. Let's make this money. We're going to make it happen. And if anything, I'm going to do my best to make it happen because that's what I try to make things do. Now, if you don't want to fight... Like with now, you, now. Look, if you don't want to fight, just send one of your little A-class goons. Give me your number one student. I'll fight your number look, one I'm gonna student. I'm going to bring a paper to you. I'm going to have a thing and say, look, you did you. You gotta sign up and say I want to fight. Or the next you say, fight, I'm a pussy. Yes or no? I'm a pussy, and you gotta sign either one. <laughs> yeah, two papers. Hey, either way, look, like, either way. If he won't fight, see which one of your students are a, a, a fight in your honor. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I know they're gonna be mad too. I don't like. They're not gonna like me because you don't like me. But they probably used to be a fan of mine when they were little kids if you, in, in third grade. So now I say, if you want to want your students to try to make a name off this man, he's ready for that. Somebody gotta do it. If you won't do it. That one of your five. All right, that's good. Don't forget, follow the D by D podcast on uh, we Facebook. Battery, right? We're running out of battery, so we out of here. We, we out. out. We out. Next yeah. one back. We're coming back again on Sunday. It's same same group, right. same time. Sunday, Sunday. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me do it. Now you're going to hit. Finish. You got to hit the finish. Yeah, you're going to hit the finish. Yeah, you're going to hit the finish.